Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this uh, Audi A4 Avant. This is a 2007 model automatic 2 litre petrol. This is a non-turbo model. Um, just the, the basic 2 litre. Uh, I'm going to be changing the oil and the oil filter. Also we'll check the coolant level and we'll top up some screen wash fluid in it. Um, so I'm just going to start here with the uh, with the manual that show us how many liters of oil go in this car. So if you look at your manual, you need to find out um, which um, kilowatt do you have on your car because this um, there's different models and. Uh, and as a result you have different uh, capacities so although this one here is a 1.6 this is a 2 liter this other car this other engine will be a 1.8 and then another 1.8 here and then there will be a, another a 2 liter and another 2 liter so some are turbo some are non-turbo but you have this is 147 kW, that takes 4.5 liters, for example. But the one I have here is the 96 kW four-cylinder engine. And uh, this model takes 4.2 liters. Um, so you can get this information from your service book. You will have this sticker here and that sticker shows you the kw there so this is a 96 one um, and that's basically where you can find that information but you can also find that as far as i'm aware on your logbook so if you look look on your logbook um, find out what kw you have and then you can go by the manual so as i said this one takes 4.2 liters and it says here including filter change so that's because the filter has some oil in it if you didn't change the filter then it will take a little bit less but it doesn't give us the figure and sometimes that filter can have um, up to 300 or 400 mils um, even half a liter some of them depends on the size but um, anyway, having established that, that's the model I'm working on. It's an Avant. Uh, as I said, it's a 2007. So I'm going to start with um, just topping up some screen wash fluid on this car. And uh, you can buy um, screen wash fluid from any, any garage or petrol station ready mixed or concentrated the one i buy is concentrated um, i get different makes so don't don't need to buy the same as i'm showing you here you can buy any any that is available um, it goes in here if you buy the concentrated one then obviously you need to mix it yourself if you buy the other one um, the ready mixed one let's try to open that um, then you can just pour it in there and you don't have to be mixing or messing around with that it just works out a little bit cheaper for me because I'm always filling up car um, servicing cars and need to get uh, more value <laughs> but still this is fairly cheap about four pounds for five liters or three pounds sometimes it's on offer All right there we are that's nice and full and i don't recommend putting just water in there or also i don't recommend mixing water with washing up liquid because then you get a bit of a messy mix and sometimes uh, it blocks the jets but also um, this stuff doesn't freeze so if it's freezing out there 
if it's minus something, minus five, this won't freeze. Whereas if you have water in there, it will freeze and then it won't work. Um, just when you're driving in the motorway and you need it the most, it's not going to work. So make sure you have the proper stuff. As I said, it's not really expensive. So anyway, I'm gonna use this gadget to check the um, coolant in this car, the percentage of coolant, and also the level. Um, this tank is an easy one to see. You can see the color of the coolant. You can see it's fairly clean. If it was mixed with oil or something else, it will be looking a lot darker. Um, also, you have a minimum and a maximum mark here where coolant should be. So this one, it looks like it's sitting right in there in between the min and the max. But I had this car running for a while. Um, so that would make it go down a little bit. And if you're gonna open that after having run the car for a while, just be careful, open it slowly, release the pressure because you don't want to burn yourself with any coolant jumping out of there. Right, take that off. And uh, it says there, it takes G12. Um, so if you needed to top this up, you can use G12. Pink, it's pink or red. Um, obviously, again, if you buy a concentrated, it looks really red. When you mix it, it kind of goes a little bit pink. And if we use this gadget, we can suck some of that coolant. And um, this little gadget is going to show you the percentage of antifreeze. So that's showing me minus 25. So that means temperature outside will have to get to minus 25 in order for this antifreeze um, to freeze. So for this liquid to freeze, it will need to be minus 25. So that is a fairly good percentage. Um, you don't really wanna be at minus five or minus 10, because we have had those temperatures. And uh, freezing temperatures or this fluid, if it's frozen, it can cause uh, damage to your engine. So I'm just making sure I'm sucking the water in there properly because if it doesn't it doesn't give you the right figure so now, now it's showing me about minus 30. so that's good enough also you can check this gadget allows you to check the color of the coolant and whether it's clear or not and you can see in there it's quite clean quite clear and uh quite pink so i'm happy with that I may, I may top up a little bit, although, as I said, sometimes it goes down a little bit when you run, you get the car hot, but I'll just top it up a little bit. I already have my antifreeze here mixed. Okay, so now it's just, just gone up to the max, just a little bit below the max there, so I will leave it there. If you found that you didn't have any coolant here, if you had to top up all this much, then uh, perhaps there is a leak somewhere and you could be losing antifreeze. So it'll be normal to be in between the minimum and the, and the max. But it, like I said, if it was below, then we may have a different problem which will require further investigation. I'll just put a little bit of grease around the thread of this. Uh... Just, just where that screws onto, basically. And you will hear a click when it, like that, when it locks into place. 
So, there. Uh, that's it. We're done with that. We're done with the screen wash fluid. And now we can concentrate on the oil and the oil filter. So I'm going to start by opening this cap, which is a little bit hard. <laughs> right. And pulling the dipstick out of there. Just going to leave it there. Going to leave the cap off, but just covering the, the hole there. If you're working outside and you remove this all together, uh, make sure you cover the hole with something, a bit of rag or something, so no dirt or leaves or things going there. Um, now I'm going to get the car up. We're going to drain the oil from underneath and change the filter from underneath. And the filter I've got today is this filter. This is a Motorquip VFL 355. I'm not really that keen on that make but um, I do have another one here which is also is the same for an Audi but this is for another Audi I'm going to do uh, it's a man filter same thing but I prefer this make um, so that's the part number for W71930 and again make sure you check with your supplier don't just go and buy this uh part number or the one the other one because if you have a slightly different engine size or model or whatever the filter may also be slightly different it may be shorter it may be longer wider anything so always give your chassis or registration number so you can get the correct filter um, unless you're 100 percent sure you have the exactly same engine then it should be the same part but you can compare it obviously once you remove your filter however if you remove your filter <laughs> and you got the wrong filter then you have to run around to get the correct one so anyway let's get the car up and drain the oil so looking at the car from underneath um you're gonna have to remove these screws um that are holding this bottom cover here now i only had six of those but um i only had six of those because um there was a, a lot of cable ties on this cover it looks like uh, all the little the screws were missing so you will find you will find one technically one there and here and here and here, here, and also in there, in there, 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 and then there will be another one here, and here, and there, another three there. So I only had six, but there's quite a, quite a lot of them actually. Um, well, there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nearly of those um, and once you remove all of those then you will be able to take this cover down um, to reveal a sump where we're going to change um, well we're going to remove the sump plug bolt which is visible right there it looks like a, I think that's a 17 or a 19 mil and the oil filter is sitting up there and usually it drips down here and it makes a bit of a mess here as I can already see there is some oil here but that usually happens when it drips from there right so um, let's get going here make sure you get yourself an oil pan to catch the oil and remember that oil can be very hot Okay, so that bolt there is a is actually a 19 mil. So just uh, crack that open. And we can then just open that.
and try to avoid <laughs> dropping the bolt and make sure you have your oil pan in the right place otherwise the oil will go everywhere <laughs> right. anyway so we're gonna let that drip now for a little while and we also can tackle the filter Okay, there's our filter. I'm gonna get one of these up there. This, the size of this is uh, 7614. So this is a oil filter socket or wrench. And I'm just gonna get it through here and try to just fit it in there. And with a long extension, I'm just gonna go onto it there so hopefully that shouldn't be too tight and we should be able to oops <laughs> right we'll make sure we're sitting in properly <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit hard to just uh, it in a little bit in there so it doesn't come out again <laughs> and don't worry about tapping that in a little bit uh, it will come out quite easily so hopefully it's not going to slip again <laughs> if it's going in properly just gonna slowly open it so it doesn't slip and also um, oil will drip from there so make sure you have your oil pan sitting in the area so some oil is already Dripping. But uh, it drips onto the, uh, <laughs> basically what happens is it, it drips onto the, this cross member here. And then it comes out this area here. So it kind of makes a bit of a mess. But that's okay. We can uh, we can rinse the area with some brake cleaner. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab it with my hand because there will still be some oil in there. Try to get it out of this. Oh, here, as you can see, there's still oil there. So, I'm just gonna tip some of it on the on the pan, and that's the filter there, and still definitely has some oil in it. Okay, that is out. And uh, now what you could do is, with some paper, just clean. It's difficult to see, but up there, the surface of the, where the oil sits, the oil filter. You could just give it a little wipe. And also make sure that that part is come out so that that bit there was on the old filter and uh, you may not notice that this comes out if you don't <laughs> so as I was cleaning the area the surface so I can't quite see it this came out so that belongs to the filter
So here's here's the filter, and that's where that sits. That sits on there. So it doesn't usually come out, but um, but it did. So just make sure it's out. Otherwise, when you put your new one, it will be sitting on top of the the old gasket there, and uh, it's not gonna seal. Right, now I can wipe the area again. Right, so you can just about see the surface there, nice and shiny, clean. Right, now I have my new filter. I put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose grease around this gasket, this O-ring, and um, you, could, you could just use some uh, oil and oil it a little bit. That's just going to allow that uh, O-ring to sit nicely, to slip onto the surface and sit nicely. So again, I'm just going to go through this hole in there and uh, get our new filter up there. So, filters up there. And uh, I'm just going to do it with my hand. And uh, I'm going to tighten it with, by hand as much as I can. I just need to remove the camera to the other side because it doesn't let me grab it properly <laughs> so um, I'm gonna like I said just tighten it by hand um, I don't you don't need to use the tool uh, if you use the tool you you will over tighten that it usually you usually just tighten that by hand so If you feel um, you haven't tightened it enough, I mean, you could use your tool to tighten it a little bit, but make sure you don't overdo it or you can damage the thread. Um, and hopefully the thread of the filter will get damaged, but if you damage the thread of the uh, filter housing, then we have a problem. <laughs> so. So, like I said, it's best to get your hand through here and tighten that filter by hand as much as you can. So, in my case, that is done now. Um, and now, we can move on to... Refitting the sand plug bolt. I will uh, rinse the areas with some brake cleaner there was some oil there just want to make sure that that oil is not uh it's not leaking from somewhere else so just try to clean the area as much as you can leave it nice and dry and uh, next time you check or you do a service if you have an oil leak you can see maybe possibly see where it's coming from uh, so in this case scenario um, I, I don't know this car it's the first time I actually am working on it so there was some oil there and uh, it looks like it could be coming from the sump gasket but whether it's a very small amount or it's a substantial amount, I don't know. So now that I'm servicing the car, changing the oil, uh, I know exactly how much is going in there and next year I can check the car again. Because it will definitely come back to me for service. Um, so anyway, I'm going to clean the area as much as I can. Okay, so I'm also changing the uh, sunplug 
uh, washer here, uh, but I had to cut it. I used some cutting pliers, cut it and got it out of there because <laughs> I couldn't, um, normally you can pull it out or sort of unscrew it, but I couldn't get it to catch the thread to unscrew it. So I just cut it and got it out of there. Uh, anyway, I have a new copper washer here and uh, the size of that copper washer, if you need one, it's 14 by 20 by 1.5. So sometimes, well, as as we use the washers, they get squashed and then you can't unscrew them from here. They just get squashed out and inwards sort of thing. And uh, these uh, bolts normally get tightened to up to 30 Newton meters. So if you have a torque wrench, you can use that and, and tighten the bolt but if you don't and you decide not to use one then just be careful when you tighten this you don't want to overdo it you definitely don't want to damage your sump so it's important not to overdo that so 30 meter meters isn't exactly a lot of force so that now that's closed I'm just going to tighten that a little bit like that and that's it I'm not applying tons of force there so I could carry on tightening this and uh, probably damage something don't want to damage anything so don't overdo it now we clean the area here it's a good idea to have all this nice and clean also because you can check if there's any oil drips from here if there are you could tighten that a little bit more but uh, it'll be very um, unlike to have a drip from there right um, now that it's shut our filter is on I'm going to put this cover back on here. Uh, just have to put some cable ties and whatnot, so that's going to take me a little while. And then I'm going to drop the car, uh, well, let it down, and uh, I'm going to put some oil. Okay, so now we're ready to top up some oil. And um, again, if you look at your manual, if you look at the engine, so I'm going to look at the one that I have here, the 96 kW there. Um, the engine oil, the recommended here, it's a long life service, could be that one there, VW50300 or 50400. And the other one for, well, if it's fixed in uh, service interval, then you have those other ones there. Um, so these are like a part numbers that you can get from VW or Audi, you can get those oils for the car. Um, but also, if you look at this section here, engine oil, um, it does say if you, if you cannot uh, get the specified oil for the vehicle, um, you can use ACEA A2 or ACEA A3 for petrol engines, or um, ACA B3 or B4 for diesel engines um, so I'm using 5W30 today uh, of the A3 type there um, so just have a look at your manual if in doubt so I've already put three and a half liters in there and uh, I'm just gonna put the rest you have to pour it in slowly because uh, it can overflow a little bit on top of the cover there. Okay, 
I've got my 4.2 in there. I'm gonna close this and uh, quickly have a look at the dipstick here. The manual also, also shows you um, how to check your oil, but I have, I have plenty in there at the moment. So at the moment it's showing me to be somewhere up here where, where it says max. But we're aiming to be just below, just where the max line starts down here. But at the moment it's up here. But the reason for that is because some of that oil goes into the um, oil filter once we run the engine a little bit. So I'm gonna run the engine now, uh, five, just a few seconds and then switch it off. So the oil will, by now it's already gone through the oil filter and it's already in the system. So obviously the best way to check the oil will be to leave the car for a little bit longer, but uh, I haven't got time to do that just now. So I'm going to switch it off. And uh, now it's off. I'm gonna get the dipstick out. Just clean it. And so, as I was just uh, saying, the manual will show you there is a minimum mark here, there is a maximum mark there. And uh, if you were checking your oil and you're at the minimum, you would want to top up a little bit to get it into this area here. You don't want to be here or below. If there's nothing, you definitely want to top up. Um, so obviously today, just having done the service, we want the oil to be technically up there. So that is more or less where I'm aiming to have it at. So it might be difficult to see because the oil is right now is nice and clean, but we'll be able to see the shiny area on it so there we are you can just see that oil is up there sitting below the max section just on that area there and uh, i'm happy with that so engine is running well no dodgy sounds and you could check for any leaks or anything like that if you wanted to. Um, if you didn't put the cover underneath, you could see if there's any leaks from the sand plug bolt or from the oil filter. But um, having said that and having done that, uh, this is the end of the video. So I hope the video helps. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. And thank you for watching.